Hello, hello. I am dropping the kids off. Um, they have a youth group event tonight. They're doing a bonfire and so forth. And don't worry, I'm on a back road and I'm going about three miles an hour. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the chances of me running into uh, another person on this road are pretty slim. Uh, the reason I pulled my camera out is I want to show you a few things. How many of you are foragers? On just this little bitty road, heading over to um, not really our neighbors, but some people we go to church with where the kids are going to youth group, I just noticed so many things that um, could be harvested or foraged. And so I wanted to share some of that with you. Now, back when I started the video just a few seconds ago, there were all kinds of mulberries. And so um, that would be something that could be foraged. And I'm gonna shut the camera off for a second well, we'll see. Right down here, I do believe, is a big old patch of white flowers. And I want you to see these because I want you to know what they are. They're elderberry. I love elderberry. And so I'm, there it is. Um, Along this road, when I was bringing the kids, ooh, look at that, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna hop out here. This is like totally on the fly. Got my daughter's car here. Um, I just want you to see this so you can recognize it too. Okay. All right, you see this? This is elderberry. And it is blooming right now. And then in August, it is gonna get black. Sorry, I was trying to watch my step. It's gonna get black and have the little berries on it. So hopefully you can see that. This one hasn't opened up yet, but these have. But that is absolutely what it looks like. So if you see that, so here's a big old patch of it. And up there, there's some more. There's a whole bunch of it on this road. And the reason that it caught my attention is because since we've moved here, um, oh, I can see bunches of it here. I really hadn't found a whole lot of it around. I did put up a little bit of it last fall, but really not very much. And so I'm super excited about that. So anyway, that's what to look for. And um, happy foraging. I'm still driving really slow. Um, <laughs> there's an Oriole that's kind of tagging along with me and talking to me, which is really cool. Um, I'm, I'm gonna stop again because I wanna share this with you also. This is, <laughs> this is turning into um, more than I thought it would, but how exciting. Okay, so here's another plant that you wanna watch for. I'm gonna show you the leaves so you can see what I'm talking about. These are wild plums. And again, um, I have found wild plums here where we lived, um, or live. They're called sand plums is what somebody, some people call them. But I just want you to look at the leaves so you know what they are. If you're not sure, check with your extension office. They can help you out too. But right now we're in the green stage, another month or so, and they'll be turning ripe um, just like the the elderberries will. And as you can see, plums, um, anybody read Little House in the Prairie? Uh, they grow kind of in what are called thickets. And so this is a plum thicket right here. Just another thing on the same, same back road. And um, plums are wonderful to can up. We like plum jam, plum jelly, plum syrup. You can do um, plums in just in a, a light syrup if you want to. Um, so yeah, even this, uh, some of you are gonna know what this is and some not. This is sunflower. And there's tons and tons and tons, like millions of them along the road. And um, yeah, really just all over the place. Sunflowers can be harvested and dried when the the time comes and um, let your hens peck at them through the winter. I like to harvest them and tie them in bundles upside down and then just let my hens peck at them in the winter time for something a little different. So this is what the, this is another plum thicket along here just so you can see what it looks like. 
just to give you an idea of what you're looking for. Now, of course, I, I want you to understand you can't just walk on somebody's property and pick plums um, or any of these things. You need to ask permission. But locating them is the first step. And as long as you have permission, um, then you're well on your way. Um, that's a really good reason to get to know your neighbors, get to know the people around you. Uh, there's more plums here than most people are ever going to use. And so I really doubt I'll have a hard time um, convincing them to let me harvest a few of them. Now, some of these, um, I don't know if you can see it over there. See underneath that cottonwood tree? There's a whole bunch of elderberries there, too. See the white flowers? And this tree here, I'm going to walk a little closer. We have lots and lots of them at home, so I, I'm not really hunting them anywhere else. But this is a big old mulberry tree. Can you see the pink up in the branches there? There's another one and another one another one lots and lots of mulberries they're really fun mulberry syrup mulberry um, jelly mulberry pies mulberry um, muffins yeah all kinds of stuff and there's some vines there it looks like probably wild cucumber which is um, not anything that you actually do anything with however I may check it out another day just to check and see. It could be wild grapes. But right in front of us, there again, is some of that elderberry. And we all know how healthy that is for us. Um, yeah, that's just a, a wonderful find. So back in there, there's some more too, back in there. And some of you probably, um, you know, have heard about harvesting stinging nettle. I see plenty of that. This time of year, it's going to be pretty intense. Um, the stinging nettle you generally want to harvest in the spring and I can't honestly say that I have ever done that although I I do have some real good friends who have over the years and have really enjoyed it so anyway just wanted to share um, some of my finds look around get to know what's here talk to lots of people that will help you might be surprised at what's growing right in your neck of the woods all right so if you haven't already, subscribe to our page. Please like this video. Share it with others. We're a baby page. We're growing daily. And um, yeah, we just thank you for being along for the ride. Isn't it beautiful? Be blessed. Have a great night. Thanks. All right, you caught me. I've stopped again. Um, just want to show you a couple more things. I'm still on the same little stretch of road. I haven't even gone a mile. There are hundreds of milkweed plants and although I do not harvest them or forage them um, I'm not sure if there's really a use for them other than the monarchs but anyway I want to show you a couple things first off um, there are all kinds of roses and so the wild roses look like this they can be much bigger too these have been trimmed just um, when people trim in the the road they look like that and crunch, crunch, crunch. Um, let's see if I can find some. There we go. Okay, so here's some. You can see the blooms are just passing. There's a couple bugs on there too. And then over here, there's a bud. Here we go. Anyway, so the roses have bloomed just in the last couple of weeks. And it's probably going to be hard for you to see, but up along the ditch here is just hundreds and hundreds of echinacea plants. Now, I have echinacea planted at home, and I'm, you know, just getting that going. But it's exciting to see all of this in the ditch. I may have to go home and see how to harvest that. So anyway, just wanted to update you on a couple things. All right, so when I got out of the vehicle earlier, I wanted, I'm not watching my phone, I promise, I'm just driving. I wanted to um, show you those rose, roses, the wild roses, and also the echinacea. Now, like I said, I'm gonna go home and look up um, exactly how to harvest the echinacea, because um, man, that was a big, big um, patch of it. But the rose hips, I've been collecting rose hips for quite a few years now. They're packed with vitamin C 
and how we use them at our house is I simply put them in a tea. I can't say that they're really my favorite um, taste, but I am getting used to it. I put um, a little cinnamon with it and some honey and I like it that way. So um, I think it tastes good. But um, yeah, it's just a powerful vitamin C boost. I'm not sure what other people use them for, but that's what I use them for. They're super, super easy to just pick. Literally in the fall, um, before it freezes, we go out on horseback and we just kind of walk, you know, um, are riding along the road where we live. And um, whenever we come to a big patch of the wild roses, we just hop off and harvest a bunch of them and some um, little baggies and or I'll send the kids they're really good about doing that for me and um, then they bring them back to the house and I let them dry naturally I really don't do anything with them other than that and then once they're completely completely dry then I store them in um, a canning jar with a lid on it so that they last and then like I said I just use them for tea and put some honey in it and a little bit of cinnamon for for taste but I'm sure you could do lots of other things with them actually as I'm talking I just thought to myself I wonder if I could put steep them in some apple juice maybe and then add a little cinnamon and honey and that might even be better so I might try that I've got some um, in the cupboard still and I think I might do that this evening and sit on the porch so I'll let you know how it turns out if I like the taste of that or not um, I think I still have some left we'll find out and uh, yeah we'll, we'll move forward on the echinacea and see what it can be how it can be harvested and um, <clears throat> I, I'm just super excited about all the things that I found. There were lots and lots of um, big patches of um, sumac as well. And for those of us in the Midwest, sumac here is um, safe. It is not something that's poisonous. There are areas in the United States uh, that have poisonous sumac and I'm not an expert on that so I'm not going to tell you whether yours is safe or not. I just would really encourage you to um, find out about that in your own area as it gets to fall we will talk about that and I'll, I'll tell you what I do with it but um, I do enjoy using the sumac as well and um, yeah so okay I'm headed home I'm gonna enjoy some time in the garden this evening and hopefully I'm gonna post a couple videos for you that actually we shot um, <laughs> before we actually officially got our channel going so we're just terribly scared as we're, we're on um, camera and that's okay, but there's some cute things that you might want to know about us or whatever. So hopefully I'll get those done in the next day or two and uh, get those out there so that you can see them. I hope that you will hop in a vehicle or on horseback or go for a walk and just see what you can find. Um, get a book. You can look, um, of course you can, Go to your extension office and I'm sure they will have recommendations for things in your area. You can go to the library, um, just look up online, but sometimes to reference those local um, folks is really a, a good idea for foraging. Um, we forage for mushrooms and that sort of thing too, depending on the time of year. And the spring we really had, we're really, really fortunate. Um, we found a lot 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 more than we ever have and so that was really exciting we dried them and, and all of that so anyway that's a whole nother topic all right um thanks for watching make sure you like our video um give us a thumbs up so we know that you like it if you have comments i would love to hear what you forage for uh, and of course please 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 share this with people you know so that our baby channel can grow the more it grows the more we can um, you know share with other people and that really is our goal so we just thank you for watching you are so blessed and um, I just hope you have a fabulous night thanks